Simon. Um, are players, or are clubs faking injuries of players to avoid drug testing on game day? Oh, that's information that I've got no idea about. This policy is an AFL policy, it's an AFLPA policy, and it's led to a, a medical model. So you're asking me questions that I have no line of sight over, and it's something that I've never really thought about, to be honest. Um, you know, I just back in the process of what the policy is, and these are questions you're going to have to ask the AFL. So were you surprised to hear that this is taking place or has taken place? Well, it's news to me. So it's, I think it's a surprise to everyone in the industry because of there's no line of sight for me as my position as a head coach. I haven't got a line of sight on what that policy looks like. So um, I understand the policy, but I don't get the information um, that people would expect to get. So, um, yeah, it's news to me. You say you've got no line of sight on it, but is it the sort of question you'll now ask? Does this happen to any Melbourne player? Well, I think it's a question you have to ask the AFL about what the policy looks like moving forward. Um, so, you know, it's not for me to have an opinion right now. Um, all I do is I get the information that I'm required and the policy says that it's information that should remain confidential. So um, it's not unexpected that I don't have the information because that's the way the policy is designed. So um, it's something that you will have to ask the AFL. Um, I'm sure it's something that they'll give good clarity on and we can all move forward. Have you seen, does it make you second guess the information you get from your own doctors if there's this idea that they'll tell you one thing and something else might not be true? No, not at all. I think when you, you start to digest the information that you get given, um, you just take it on face value. And as I said, this is a process that the AFL, the AFLPA and the club doctors put together um, from a confidentiality perspective. Um, so to have no line of sight is not unusual, but I've got enormous trust in our doctor in terms of them being able to do their job. So I'm not going to question you know, how they go about their business. Can you understand that any player who's a laid out or an out or whatever it is, there's going to be the suspicion now that are they actually injured or are they just being withheld for a, you know, other reasons? You know, I, mean, I think that's information that the AFL will be able to give clarity on moving forward. I think this is new information that we're all sitting on at the moment and we're all starting to digest and we've only just got this information as of, you know, 12 hours ago. So I think as we work through today and the AFL um, provide some more information. I think we'll be able to build some more clarity about what it looks like moving forward, but I'm not going to speculate on what that will look like um, until we get all the information. I know you, we don't want to harp on this too much, but in terms, I don't know, you can't you can only give us what you know, but you said it's new information. Has there been a suspicion, though, a bubbling under the surface with this policy in the background from a football perspective that this is going on, but it's just not in public view? I can only talk from my perspective, and I've never questioned anything that sits in that space. I've never thought about it, to be honest with you. And to be honest, my job is to coach the footy team, and that's all I'm focused on. So I've never actually had that thought, that process, and it doesn't really cross my mind on a week-to-week -week basis. And on the illicit drug policy, I mean, you sort of forward to the need reform, and, and this is the sort of point where it maybe needs change? Or... I think that's not for now to have that opinion. I think once we get more information about the process and more line of sight about it, what it looks like in behind the medical model, I think then it's the time to have a bit more of an informed opinion on what that might look like. But I don't think today, 12 hours on from getting new information, is the time to have a really good opinion on that. Is it really difficult for you at the moment, Simon, and the club, dealing with some of the former staff and some of their stories that just continue to, to arrive? Is that a difficulty and challenge that you are dealing with? Um, no, it's, as I said, this is more of an AFL thing we're dealing with today. Um, in terms of former staff, I've got no real opinion on, on that. Um, you know, this is an AFL policy, an AFLPA policy, and led by the, the club doctors and the people involved, so um, that's where it sits today. Good, you said that you've got full trust in the doctor, but your former doctor is now making these allegations. What was your reaction when you, when you saw the news last night or this morning that a former doctor is saying this about the club and about actions that were allegedly taking place when you were coach? Yeah, obviously I, I don't have a thought about the, the ex-doctor or where that sits. As I said, this is, this is new information and this policy has been in place for a long time. So this is, as I said all along, this is an AFL policy. Um, it's got nothing to do with our doctor, our ex-club doctor. This is an AFL-wide thing. So I think we need to, to get to the bottom of it through the, through the AFL and then we can have some more information going forward. You know, I think 
I've answered that plenty of times in terms of you know the information that we get. Um, so, you know, as I said, you have to ask the AFL. They, they get the most line of sight on what that would look like. Do you think high people at the top of the AFL were aware of that risk? I've got no idea. And in terms of the illicit drug policy, is it actually beneficial as a whole to have one? Oh, look, as I said, you'll have to ask the AFL and the, and the PA in terms of how the policy's been able to help players in the system. And um, they're the ones that have been driving this policy. They're the ones that have been running this policy. They're the, they're the ones that would see the success stories that sit within the policy. So they're all questions that I, I have no line of sight over, and you'll have to ask them and get the bigger details on it. Will you ask the AFL? I think every club's interested now yep. to find out more information. Um, that... Um, I'm sure that's a given right across the competition, and we're, we're one of those people. But this has affected you personally as well. Like the senior coach of the club has been crawled through this mess for now a couple of years. Is it something that you'll seek to investigate yourself so you can get answers? Absolutely we will. I think every person in Clubland would want answers and want understanding of how the policy works and is it a success? And um, we're no different to that. Um, yeah, we've been through a bit, but as I said, this is an AFL policy and um, we'll be asking the appropriate questions and getting the answers that we need. I'll ask you a footy question. Um, That'd be great. That'd be awesome, actually. Oh, that's what we come for. I like that. Um, Let's get into the footy. We've got a big game this week against Port. Jake Lever. Uh, yeah. What will he play? Uh, how's that sitting? Uh, yeah, like, we're really confident he'll play. Um, so he'll train today. Um, we're really confident he'll be able to get through that session and, and be available for this week. So that's exciting for our club after the weekend where there's a bit of doom and gloom about having you know, our two key defensive pillars out. Um, Jake Lever, really confident he'll play. Stephen May, will it just be the one week, do you think, at the moment? Or is it yeah, look, he'll run, do some running today. And that might sound a bit strange to people, but just get a guide on where he sits. But we're confident he'll travel to Adelaide with us. Um, and we're really, really hopeful that he'll play the following week against Adelaide. At this stage, yeah. He's pretty tough. Yeah, he's tough. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure if he runs today and he runs well, he'll be knocking on the door saying, put me in. But um, I don't expect that to be the case. Is it just a pain management thing that he's done? Or like, is it just how much he's... Yeah, absolutely. You know, anyone that's had a crack in their ribs would understand that they are painful. You know, sneezing, coughing, you know, laughing, all those things can cause you a fair bit of grief. Um, but once you can tolerate the pain, there are things that you know, lots of players have played with previously. Um, we certainly won't be silly in that space. Um, we'll make sure that he's right, he's feeling good, he's feeling healthy and he's able to play and perform. And that's the key thing um, that you can perform. You know, we're still at the very early stages of the season, so we've got to make sure that he's right you know, moving forward. Jack Liney, 200, can you explain to us what he means to you as a decline? Oh, look, he's you know, everything that we want from a demon spirit perspective. You know, I think, you know, when Jack came to the club, um, we needed a group of players that were highly competitive and he just led the charge on that. Um, he's probably the most competitive person I've met. He typifies everything we want and to me, he's helped grow this club significantly in the last 10 years and I'm just so happy for him. I know 200 games to him isn't the record he wants. He wants the 234 to knock off his dad. That tells you a bit about how competitive he is as a, as a person. Um, but it's, a, it's just a fantastic honour for him. You know, he's been a, a captain of our footy club. He's been a leader of our footy club for a long time. And uh, you know, hopefully we can play the right way for him. Is he underrated externally, do you think, Jack? Um, I look, potentially in some areas. But he's, if you watch him closely, what he does for our team and uh, the way that he plays, he's an elite player of the competition. Has there been any more significant player than him over his period of time at the club? Um, look, in terms, of, in terms of helping shape our culture and shape uh, the way we're seen as a footy club, he's had as much impact as anyone at our footy club. You know, he's, he's driven standards to an incredibly high level, the way he trains and the way he competes. Um, that's what we want as a, as a footy club. Just if they misses, uh, will Petty potentially go back? Do you think you look it up? If I told you that, I'd be telling Port Adelaide. So, um, yeah, look, we've got some options. You know, Adam Tomlinson's played, you know, some, some solid footy. Um, Marty Hoare plays tall as well. So we've got some options um, in the back half of the ground. 
Um, and Harrison is one of those players that you'd, you'd love two of him uh, at either end of the ground. So we'll make that decision, you know, probably tomorrow. What have you made of Port's start? Oh, they're an impressive side. You know, they're, they're as a dynamic a side as any. Um, so we're now we're up against their midfields, you know, incredibly talented. Um, they've got three big forwards that, that mark the ball. So, um, you know, it's going to be a great game. I think every game that we've played against Port Adelaide, Adelaide over in the last three or four years has been highly con contested and very tight games. So we're expecting nothing different. It's going to be a cracker. You had the same with Jules and Sarah after the game that you said it's square work and how well you were going in the How much of that is planning and hard work and how much of it is the ball bouncing your way sometimes? Oh, yeah, there's a bit of that. But, you know, um, Andrew McWalter and our midfield group has spent a lot of time on centre bounce. It's an area of our game that we think we can perform really strongly in and they've spent a lot of time on that so the result on the weekend didn't surprise me they're working incredibly hard to get that part of a game right um, and we've got some players there that are quite unique in the way that they they play so we've got to maximize that strength and and make it a real weapon that within our game and they're doing a great job at the moment Has Christopher tried to stop talking about that spoiler yet? <laughs> no he hasn't um, we've probably watched it about 10 times um, but I think it just shows you that in this playing group currently, there is a determination, a desire, a competitiveness um, that shows that we want to be successful. And when you see acts like that, that says a lot about our group and it says a lot about the determination that sits within it. And uh, he's one of those guys that's leading the way in that, in that space.